TMZ broke the news that Jimmy Uso was busted in Florida on Thursday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, no less, 3 a.m., and charged with DUI after cops observed him driving erratically and swerving all over the road. They said that he reeked of alcohol and he refused a breathalyzer on the scene. He was released from jail after posting bond of $1,000, and he has a court date set for August 15th. This, after John Cena cracked a joke just a few days earlier on Monday Night Raw, in a segment with the Usos, where they got Cena to rap with them. And he made a crack about how they look just like their mugshots. And he asked them, what was it like to be arrested? Because both Usos have spent time, I believe both of them have spent time behind bars. I know one had a DWI, I don't know if he actually was... Uh, incarcerated for that, but at least Jimmy has, if not both of them, have spent time behind bars. In fact, multiple times. And after Cena made the joke, Jey Uso gave a shout-out to the Hillsborough County Police Department. That's a call back to his brother's second DUI arrest back in 2013, also in Florida. His first DUI, or at least the first one that we know of publicly, also happened in Florida. For those counting... That is three arrests for DUI for Jimmy Uso dating back to 2011. Four arrests total if you want to count the incident where Naomi got pulled over in February for driving the wrong way down the street with Jimmy bombed out of his mind in the seat next to her. At least he wasn't driving. She ended up getting out of the car or she was explaining to them that I'm lost, I don't know where I was going... And Jimmy, who, like I said, was just bombed out of his mind, got out of the car. I think he was shirtless. He got out of the car and he was squaring up for a fight with the cops until they threatened to tase him. Only then did he cooperate and get down on the ground. So it's actually four arrests, three for DUI. He's got his brother beat. Jay only got popped once last year for DWI. He's got some catching up to do. Most people don't get arrested once in their lives for a DUI, let alone three different times. And when you're pulled over for swerving all over the road, you're putting other people's lives in danger. It's the Matt Hardy stuff all over again. When Matt was getting arrested every other week, when Matt was at rock bottom in his life, I went off on, on him on the whole situation. I went off on him too because he could have killed somebody. He could have killed someone. He could have killed himself, but he could have killed somebody else. And of course, WWE here pulled a control V, copy and paste of their usual statement, the same one they used recently for Jeff Hardy when he was found passed out in a stairwell from drinking vodka all night, 1130 in the morning. They used the same exact statement. They just substituted a different name. Jonathan Fatu is responsible for his own personal actions. Well, I would certainly hope so. I would hope that a 33-year-old man would be responsible for the decisions that he makes in his life. That sounds good after the first time. And I know they can hide behind the whole independent contractor deal as an excuse to not do anything and not take any kind of action. If this guy has a drinking problem, they can't force him to go to rehab. You can't force somebody to go to rehab if they don't want to. And, and look, maybe Jimmy Uso doesn't get blackout drunk every night, and he feels that he can control his liquor just fine. But here's the difference. Clearly he can't, because he chooses to stupidly get behind the wheel when he goes out. At what point does this company step in and say, listen, Every time you get arrested, it's our name that makes headlines too. You're going to kill yourself one day. You're going to kill somebody else. One more time, and you're gone. One more time, and you're out of here. How selfish do you have to be? You're part of a tag team with your own brother. His spot, his job is on the line too. Your wife works for the company. You're putting her in a very awkward spot. It's time to take action. If he needs help, 
try to get him the help he needs. You can't force him, but try to get him the help he needs. And if he refuses, then either suspend him or get rid of him. Have the courage to send a message that this kind of shit is not going to be tolerated. But to just put out the same stock, one-line statement and not take any action, what happens next time? What happens next time if you run some, some family off the road? Are they going to put the same statement out? I guess that would be my question. When you have a pattern of behavior, as you now do, at what point... And by the way, yeah, he got popped for DUI. He got caught this time. It stands to reason that if he's done this a bunch of times before, these are only the times that he's been caught doing it. But what happens next time? At what point, when you have a pattern of behavior, do you show people that you actually give a shit and take some kind of action? Because if that ever happened, if that ever happened, where it got tragic, I doubt very seriously that they would just put the same statement out. So I, I guess is that the threshold that we're trying to meet here? Hurting or killing somebody else and then we'll graduate from the one line to something a little more serious? There are some stupid fucking drivers out there, let me tell you. They're not all drunk, necessarily, but we've all been on the road with them. And it's maddening, because you could be the best driver in the world. You could be the most responsible, you don't even speed. You could be the most responsible person on the road. And it does not matter. Do all the right things. Doesn't matter, because all it takes is one asshole for a tragedy to happen. Somebody who's speeding 100 miles an hour down the road, swerving between lanes, not putting their signal on. Somebody who decides to make a left turn from the right lane. I just saw somebody the other day just in the neighborhood here, not on the highway or anything, driving the, the wrong way down a one-way street. People don't use their brains. I am convinced that 85% of people with a license do not know how to drive. Now imagine sharing a road with somebody with a blood alcohol level so high... He won't even let the cops measure it. There have been wrestlers in that company who have been busted for pot that have seen their pushes evaporate into thin air. Or they tweeted something that, you know, you, you read about the company didn't like. Or they had a, oh, they got a bad attitude. This guy's got a bad attitude. He's got a chip on his shoulder in the locker room. All of these stories that we've heard over the years about different people. And all of a sudden, they're getting jobbed out on TV. They're in the doghouse. Rusev and Lana, they spoiled their, their engagement. You know, TMZ broke the news and it ruined a storyline. And they end up in the doghouse on television for six months or a year. You know how much petty bullshit we've seen over the years from this company? Well, I guess we'll see if the same thing happens to these guys. We'll see if they do end up in a, in a lesser spot on the card getting jobbed out. Too early to tell. But three DUI arrests? You should not be allowed behind the wheel anymore. You should have your license revoked. In an age with Uber and Lyft and Juno, which I didn't even know knew existed until last month, that's another one, all of these apps, there is no excuse to drive drunk. None. Zero. You know, last year Vince McMahon announced that he was bringing back the XFL. We're less than a year away now from kickoff from the return of the XFL and at that time one of the things that he announced that was kind of controversial and people didn't necessarily believe it and they laughed but one of the things that he announced was that they would not be hiring any players with a criminal record or anybody who has and I quote committed a crime we're evaluating a player based on many things, including the quality of the human being that they are. If you have any sort of criminal record, or if you commit a crime, you aren't playing in this league. That's what he said. Those were his exact words. If Jimmy Uso was a linebacker, which was the position he played in college, if he was still a linebacker, I guess he wouldn't be welcome in Vince McMahon's XFL. So why are there different standards in WWE? The number of brain-dead fools that I have heard from on social media this week is remarkable. Somebody with a blue check must have retweeted my shit because I got a flood of comments from people who don't even follow me, what I call the WWE bots. 
The ones with a picture of a wrestler and their avatar and their banner with WWE hashtags up and down their profile. The universe dwellers. Don't jump to conclusions. Maybe he wasn't driving. Maybe he wasn't driving? The story makes it pretty clear that he was behind the wheel. He wouldn't have been charged with DUI if he wasn't driving. It's in the name. Driving. Under the influence. Had another person say, well, maybe he was only a little bit drunk. A little bit drunk is still drunk. Like you were when you wrote that. Please, do the world a favor. My, my PSA to these people. Do the world a favor. Do not procreate. I beg of you, please. Take a little pill. Or if you're a dude, go ahead and devenomize the cobra. Snip, snip. Please, for my own sanity. So I don't have to get tweets like this from your spawn in 20 years. You know, if it's a one-time thing, first-time offense, it still doesn't condone it, but... Look, people make mistakes, but three times. You ever heard of three strikes and you're out? Three times. They make every excuse in the book. Some of these fans do. For these people, you are a fool. If you make excuses for somebody who repeatedly gets behind the wheel of a 3,000 pound vehicle while intoxicated and you say things like, you're a hater, maybe he was only a little bit drunk, you are a dunce. Don't forget to wear your hat.